that sends them over a TCP connection to the robot, and then there's a program on the robot written in Go, which interprets those and uses the Go hardware I.O. library to actually send the signals. I'm using the micro PyTX add-on board uh, for the uh, two Caterpillar tracks here. These are really nice. These are from Pololu in Las Vegas. I'd like to get some, I'd like a supply close at home, but these are the only ones I could find. The circuit board on the back is for the lift arm. It's uh, an L293, I think, L293D, which is still a bit more uh, power, and the lift arm takes quite a lot of power to lift. So, where are we? You can just about see here, on the bottom right, there are the, there are the two prongs. Uh, I've got a wide angle lens on there from eBay. I printed a little hole for that, and uh, that just gives you enough field of view in order to drive the robot successfully. But theoretically, <laughs> the wireless has just dropped out. It's very, uh, at the moment, it's very uh, dependent on the wireless uh, signal. If the wireless signal craps out, then it's not going to work very well. Once you've got the hang of it, it's actually fairly easy, but it does take a while. I've used this a huge amount. That's right. <laughs> so, if anyone wants to come up and go, they're quite welcome to. And I guess I'll take some questions as well. So, have you thought about? Gaming it so that you could have a countdown timer and you have to pick up so many balls within a certain amount of time? Or Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> of having some sort of leaderboard uh, that uh, people could, so people could sort of compete against each other. You could have ping pong ball snooker as well. You could have different colour balls. You have to get a red ball and then a blue ball and a red ball and then a... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just for the record, Dan Lynch said that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> So you can see I can go onto the tables, which you know ordinarily I'd have to get on my hands and knees and do. <laughs>